Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about something pretty serious tonight. Um, I guess it's something that concerns medical ethics, and it's something maybe some of you who watch this show maybe don't want to hear. So, uh, you know, I guess I'll put a trigger warning, ladies and gentlemen, on tonight's show. But uh, it's going to be concerning the, um, the, the, the Zell case, the girl who passed away recently. It's a very sad uh, turn of events. And we're going to talk a little bit about the medical ethics situation that surrounds that case. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about something uh, kind of serious tonight on the report for Tiger Mountain. I'm going to talk about this uh, case of uh, this girl, Dizelle, uh, who um, passed away recently. Um, the situation was, is that uh, she was a pretty sick uh, girl and needed to have um, a lung transplant. And for whatever reason, the hospital that uh, did this operation required her to have, I think, two or four um, you know, COVID shots, and uh, she was sort of an anti-vaxxer, and her parents were anti-vaxxers, or at least they became that way. They even believed the disease that she got, um, I think, could have come from a vaccine. So, um, you know, and how I want to talk about this, I don't really wish to criticise her parents or this uh, you know, 16, 17 year old girl, um, her own decisions, because she appears like she was pretty adamant in not wanting the vaccine. I just think it raises an interesting question of medical ethics um, and I just wanted to discuss that so I, this is not an attack upon this family at all all people that support her decision within the freedom movement but look my initial reaction and I've got to be completely honest with you um, you know uh, and there's there is a, a lot of reasons I have for thinking this uh, is that when I heard this girl needed say two two um, two two vaccine shots to get the operation now I want to say up front I'm not supporting of the vaccine I'm not I didn't take it myself and uh, you know I know a couple of family members that did but you know I, I think they regret taking it now even so you know I don't support that and I certainly don't support mandates so I'm not this is not about justifying mandates at all but I'm just saying when this situation exists when you need a life-saving operation and for whatever reason the hospital and there's only, say there's only one place you can go or whatever uh, and they need you to take two shots you need to do what I would call a risk assessment so for example the risk of say not having a life-saving operation is that you will die which is what happened with this poor girl she passed away now the risk of taking the vaccine is not certain death I mean you know I don't know what the risk is but it's certainly not that if you take it you are definitely going to die most people who took the vaccine are okay you have to admit that and I think that the vaccine community the anti-vax community becomes a little cult-like in its and it doesn't do risk assessments when they're in this um rock in a hard place kind of position and i think that that is dangerous and um i think that it's worth pointing out which is why i'm doing today's report because i want to talk about another friend of mine he um he needed a kidney uh transplant and he he was on dialysis before the whole COVID event happened um, and you know, I knew this was wrong with my, my friend. I've known him for 30 years since my nightclub days. And you know, I was obviously concerned for my friend and then COVID happened and then there's the talk of the vaccine and then that happened. And then he was told to stay at the top of the list um, you know, of transplants, he had to take the COVID vaccine. Otherwise he would be moved to the bottom. And he'd spent years getting to the top. And I remember he, you know, he, he was obviously thinking about it. He mentioned it on Facebook and he wrote me and he said, what do you think Richard? And I said, well, look, you know, to be honest with you, take the fucking COVID shots and, and save your life, you know, get this life-saving um, operation. So, um, you know, that's, uh, he was pretty much on the same page. He agreed. So he did take, I think he took two AstraZeneca. He had no problems taking it. There was no blood clotting issue. He was one of the very lucky people who took AstraZeneca as many, many people did, had no problems. And then about three to six months after he did that, um, a kidney became available and he was at the top of the list. He went into hospital and now he's had the new kidney in. He's off dialysis and he'll probably live another 30 years. So I think that the anti-vax community needs to look when they're in that rock and a hard place decision, it might have been the better thing to have at least tried to save this girl's life because it appears to me that everyone knew that if she didn't have the operation, she would die. Okay, you know, so that's a terrible thing. And, but if she took two COVID shots, maybe they could have, you know, had given her a new set of lungs. And my initial reaction when I heard of this case, because, you know, I do a risk assessment because I'm pragmatic, I just thought instantly, give her the fucking vaccine and have the operation. You do not grandstand when there's a 16-year-old girl's um, life at stake. And again, if this was a 45-year-old man or woman who was an anti-vaxxer who wanted to stand on their principles, okay, 
I understand that there are people like that who will not take the vaccine under any circumstances. And you are 45 years old or whatever, but when it's a 16 year old girl, you are influenced by the people around you, your parents, um, you know, the freedom movement was all around of people telling her not to take it. I worry about something like that. Is it like a cult-like environment? If you were bought into, say, Scientology, are you naturally going to have an L. Ron Hubbard kind of perspective? So, you know, it's a difficult topic to talk about because I have so many friends in the freedom movement. And believe me, this conversation is not popular, ladies and gentlemen. People don't like to hear this. And, you know, but that's just how I felt. And it, it really annoyed me um, the way a lot of people behaved in relation to this. And now they have a kind of martyr and there's pictures of this poor girl everywhere. I would have much preferred to have her to have <coughs> had the risk of taking, taking the vaccine and potentially saving a life, you know, by getting a new set of lungs, maybe everything would have been fine. Of course, maybe things with this poor girl, you know, would not have succeeded, even if they'd gone that way. So it's a terrible situation. But again, the whole point I want to talk about it is not to attack anybody, whether it be the parents, the girl herself. Of course, I don't want to attack them, all people that supported their decision. It's that it sets a kind of medical um, precedent also, and it also raises the issue of medical ethics. I'm somebody who studied um, philosophy at university. I'm somebody who's interested in ethical questions. I'm surrounded here by great philosophers like Heidegger, Nietzsche, Jung, just behind me. These people, I think, you know, um, raise very interesting questions apropos medical ethics. And some of them might, might have disagreed with what I'm saying here today, but like, I think that the pragmatic thing to do, you know, in that situation, when you need a life-saving operation and you're somehow forced to take a vaccine, Sadly, is this to probably take the shots, get this life-saving operation, and then once you're alive, if you, you know, hopefully you roll the dice and, you know, maybe you don't get a, a vaccine side effect because many people didn't. So that's all I wanted to say. And that's, I guess, it in a nutshell. And I'm sorry if I've offended anybody because I know this probably will offend some people, but that's just the way it is. Um, you know, this is free speech is also important to the freedom movement. So uh, hopefully I've just said my bit and that's it. Thank you.